Hello boys and girls, welcome to my show Dope Family. I'm your host, Ms. Doe. Before we start the case, I'd like to say a few things. Well, first of all, someone heard me and right now I have a new phone. Yay! I'm so happy and I hope this phone's storage room will never be full and it will not interrupt us while we are shooting videos and um, I don't remember I was gonna say one more thing oh yes uh, it's officially summer here and it's like um 30 degrees or more and i'm literally melting and i just didn't feel like doing any makeup or doing my hair blah blah so i decided to be just myself in this video and yeah yeah that's it and this is the first video i'm ever, i'm taking with my new phone yeah. <laughs> On today's episode, we are here to talk about a young woman who was referred to as Buckskin Girl or Miami, Co Miami County Jane Doe, but then was identified in 2018 as Marcia King. Um, before we go into details, I must warn you, uh, this video will include some graphic photos like um, the body of the victim. So if you feel uncomfortable about the situation, if you don't want to see any photos, graphic photos, then you can quit watching the video right now and then maybe I'll see you on my next video. On April the 24th, 1981, three young men discovered the body of a young Caucasian woman in a ditch alongside Greenlee Road in Newton Township, Troy, Ohio. One of the three men, Greg Frydenbow, initially noticed the decedent's distinctive buckskin poncho. Informing one of his companions, Neil Hoffman, to take a look at the coat, Hoffman walked closer to the article of clothing before turning toward Breidenbaugh, stating, Oh my god, there is a woman in that coat. The young woman was lying in a fatal position on her right side and without shoes or socks. The men immediately reported their discovery to the police. The decedent's body was autopsied on the afternoon of her discovery. The medical examination revealed she had suffered extensive blunt force trauma to the head and neck before she had been strangled to death approximately 48 hours before her body was discovered. Additionally, her liver was found to have been lacerated. She had not been subjected to any form of sexual assault. The woman had been between 5 feet 4 inches, 163 centimeters, and 5 feet 6 inches, 168 centimeters in height, aged between 18 and 26, and weighed between 125 pounds to 130 pounds, um, around 57 to 59 kilograms. Yeah, she had naturally reddish brown hair, which was spotted in the middle and braided into pigtails on both sides of her hat. Her eyes were light brown in color and she had freckles across her face. In addition, her nose was described as being very pointed, 
The victim also had a red ruddy complexion, indicating she had spent a lot of time outdoors in the final weeks or months of her life. Is it gonna stop? I'm sweating like a pig and I'm still learning to use this phone and I, I still can't find a camera so I'm really really sorry but I'm in, in nature so yeah yeah well let's let's not talk about it okay the young woman had maintained a high level of personal hygiene all her feet including her Wisdom teeth were in good condition and had no evidence of fillings or other dental work, except for one porcelain crown upon her upper right in Caesar. The coroner also noted several scars upon her body, including a vertical scar beneath her chin, with other scars also visible upon one wrist, both arms, and one ankle. The young woman was dressed in blue bell bottom Wrangler jeans, a brown turtleneck pullover sweater with an orange crisscross design on the front, a white size 32D bra, and a hoodless deerskin poncho with purple lining, which appeared to be handmade. She wore no shoes or socks. No form of identification was located upon her body or at the crime scene. Because the decedent's body was found approximately 48 hours after her death, police were able to obtain her fingerprints and dental information. The dental charts and fingerprints of this decedent yielded no results matching her to any unknown, any known <laughs> missing person and her fingerprints matched no police records indicating she had no criminal records early police efforts to identify this decedent also involved the creation of a composite drawing of her face which was published in local newspapers and broadcast on television networks on april the 28th 1981 this initial media publicity surrounding the murder generated approximately 200 leads. Although all were investigated, all failed to bear fruit. The victim gradually became known as Buckskin Girl in reference to the distinctive tasseled buckskin jacket she was wearing when found. The failure to establish her identity hindered investigators' efforts to solve her murder. As her identity remained undiscovered, investigating authorities came to increasingly believe the reason Buckskin Girl remained unidentified had been due to the fact that she had been murdered far from her hometown. A retired investigator is also known to have opened his belief the decedent was highly unlikely to have originated from the area where she was discovered. Authorities strongly believed Buckskin Girl had been murdered elsewhere and her body discarded beside the road shortly after her death. This conclusion was supported by the fact that her bare feet were clean, showing no indication of her having walked upon a dirty surface and because Interstate 75 is just 5 miles, 8 kilometers from where her body was discovered, making the site of a convenient and discreet location to discard the body. Police and the media later speculated that she may have been a teenage runaway or a possible victim of a serial killer known to have murdered several prostitutes in the region during the 1980s and 1990s. However, her body had not been subjected to any form of sexual assault, indicating she was unlikely to have been a sex worker. Well, oh my god, we, we have guests at home right now and they have a little kid, so I will have to cut the video right now and I will keep shooting. I don't know where. I don't know. I don't know. God, I hate it when things like this happen. I'm so sorry.
I'm back and today we have a guest on this channel, on this video. What is your name? Ebra Sara and Majid. Ebra! How old are you? She says she is four years old and <clears throat> I will be babysitting her right now so she has to be here but I don't want to leave the video so I just decided to shoot the video with her and I hope you'll enjoy our video together. The investigation into Buckskin Girl's murder gradually became a cold case Although, police and other officials continued to investigate her murder. Her clothing and other physical evidence recovered at the crime scene was retained and a sample of her blood preserved. Scouts killed Stable, eating goats. Killed Paz and Gablum, Stable, She's imitating me. She says it's funny the way I speak because I don't speak like this in real time, real life. And by the way, I really hate my glasses, but I don't have my contacts on and I can't see kind of like without my glasses so I just have to put them on and I'm so sorry for the weird purple light on my glasses <laughs> at in the little pinky ball sing bam bam sing bell whoops sing gabbles and conch my dog and the so, there have been many theories about her lifestyle and her link to other murders. I'm going to tell you about them and then maybe at the end I will tell you about my own theory. We will see. Investigators theorize that Buckskin Girl had been a runaway teenager, a foster child, or a transient wanderer, unlikely to have spent a significant period of time in Ohio prior to her death. Although her high quality of personal hygiene strongly indicated that she had not lived as a vagrant. As her body was located close to a town road instead of a highway, the probability of her being a wanderer for a significant amount of time was considered to be negligible. The absence of her footwear at the crime scene led some investigators to believe she may have been murdered by an abusive partner. A 2016 isotope test isotope analysis of the decedent's hair and fingernails revealed Buckskin Girl had spent approximately four months in areas within the southwestern and or southeastern United States as opposed to Ohio prior to her murder. Although forensic palynology had revealed she had most likely originated from either the northeastern United States or Canada or had spent a significant amount of time in these regions in the year prior to her murder. <laughs> Initially, investigators speculated to a potential connection between the decedent and the murder of a 27-year-old woman two months earlier in February 1981. Although police never officially linked these two murders. In 1985, investigators tentatively linked the murder of Buckskin Girl to a nationwide series of murders of Caucasian women. 
several of whom were sex workers or erotic dancers known as the Red Hat Murders. However, this theory was eventually disproven. <laughs> Some investigators also speculated that Buckskin Girl may have been the first of numerous young women murdered by a suspected unidentified serial killer who perpetrated his known murders between 1985 and 2004, many of which were of known or suspected sex workers. This serial killer was suspected to have murdered between 7 and 10 other young women. All the victims of the suspected serial killer had been murdered via bludgeoning or strangulation, and items of clothing or, of, or jewelry were missing from each crime scene. Jewelry and foodware were also missing from the crime scene of Buckskin Girl, and she had been murdered in a similar manner to these victims. However, several elements of evidence were found to contradict this theory. There was no indication Buckskin Girl had engaged in any form of sexual activity prior to her death. In addition, unlike many of the victims of the serial killer, she was markedly well-groomed, with a history of dental care. And lemon, yellow stickup. Snap my peeling lips in the black box sticker. Stable, blue. Hmm? Stable, blue. Then get it, I'm stuck. Wipe, skim up, stable. Stable. In 1991, a newly established task force convened in London, Ohio. This task force was dedicated to the investigation of these unsolved homicides, which had occurred in Ohio, New York, Pennsylvania, and Illinois, and composed of investigators from more than a dozen law enforcement agencies. Evet. With advances in technology and the increasing use of DNA analysis in criminal investigations, investigators were able to extract the decedent's DNA from the blood sample preserved in 1981. This DNA sample was added to the growing number of law enforcement databases. By the way, I'm so sorry about her again. Evet, senin ablamım. Uh, <laughs> she was just çok mutlu mu oldun? Neden? She says she's so happy right now. She likes imitating me and she wants to tell stories to you, but she doesn't even know how to speak English properly. So, um, yeah, yeah, that's it. And I'm so sorry about her noise because she's in my room right now and playing with some stuff. She's playing with the puppet right now yeah okay i i think we can keep yeah pop it we can keep going in 2001 the miami valley regional crime laboratory generated a dna profile of buckskin girl this data was entered into the newly established national missing and unidentified persons system name us database <laughs> In 2008, through which her fingerprints, dental, and DNA information were made nationally accessible, accessible to law enforcement. This data was able to conclusively rule out any possibility of 2026 missing teenage girls and young women as buckskin girls. In 2009, a mitochondrial DNA sample was submitted to the FBI for inclusion within the Combined DNA Index System, CODIS. The following year, the NamUs case management of buckskin girl was assigned to Dr. Elizabeth Murray, a Cincinnati-based forensic anthropologist and professor of biology who remained active in her pursuit of the decedent's identity. 
In April 2016, the National Center of Missing and Exploited Children released two versions of an updated forensic base spatial reconstruction of the victim and added her case to their website, depicting her with and without her braided pigtails. These images were extensively distributed via online media, although initially not significant leads developed. In 2016, the Miami County Sheriff's Office approved forensic palynology testing upon the victim's clothing in their efforts to identify her and her murderers. Mm -hmm. This testing was conducted by the U.S. Customs and Border Protection Dad. Agency. Oh, yeah. The results of this testing suggested Mexican girl had either originated within the northeastern United States or had spent a significant amount of time in this region in the year prior to her murder. Where Basma? The results of this testing suggested Buckskin Girl had either originated within the Northeastern United States or had spent a significant okay. amount of time in this region in the year prior to her murder. Her clothing also contained high levels of soot from exposure to vehicular traffic and or industrial activity. Supporting investigators' initial suspicions she may <laughs> have been a habitual hitchhiker. In addition, the pollen recovered from her external clothing suggested that Shortly before her murder, she had been in an area climb such as the western U.S. or northern Mexico. Oh. On April 9, 2018, the Miami Valley Regional Crime Laboratory announced they had identified the decedent as 21-year-old Marcia Lenore King of Little Rock, Arkansas. Her identification had been achieved via DNA analysis conducted by the DNA Dog Project with assistance from the Miami Valley Regional Crime Laboratory and Full Genomes Corporation. This organization had been contacted by Dr. Murray in 2017 and was able to successfully match a sample of King's DNA to a sample submitted for comparison by a first cousin. Her family declined to release a press Is statement requesting that their confidentiality be respected. She had last been seen by her family in 1980. She had never officially been reported as a missing person, although her family had continued to search for her. It is believed King had frequently hitchhiked as a means of transportation, as investigators had long theorized prior to her identification. She is also known to have had ties with both the Pittsburgh and Louisville, Kentucky districts. Addressing the media to announce the formal identification of Buckskin Girl, a spokesman for the Miami County Sheriff's Office informed all prisons. Law enforcement never forgets. We've had a long journey to be where we are today. This spokesman also emphasized the investigation into King's homicide is ongoing, with the primary focus being upon King's movements in the last month of her life, when she was known to have been in both Pittsburgh and Louisville. In July 2018, the Miami County Sheriff's Office announced they had received further Im information regarding Hayes the cuts. Tamam ama izin almamıştı. 
Tamam sen oyuncaklarla oyna, bebeklerle. Olur mu popitle oyna? Kızmadım tamam. Küsme. Kızmadım. Ben kendim oyna bakıyorum. Bana kızmadım. Tamam. In July 2018, the Miami County Sheriff's Office announced they had received further informa information regarding King's actual whereabouts shortly prior to her death. This information included eyewitness accounts placing her in Louisville, Kentucky, approximately 14 days before her death. Six eyewitnesses have also corroborated accounts of King also being in Arkansas shortly before her murder. It is believed the reason she had traveled to Ohio may have been due to her suspected involvement with the religious organization, The Way. Okay. In February, February 2020, the Miami County Sheriff's Office announced they had been able to further reconstruct King's whereabouts and relationships in the two weeks prior to her murder, adding that as advances in technology now mean not clear. DNA samples can be retrieved from hair samples missing the actual root. They remained confident hair samples discovered at the crime scene and submitted to a renowned Californian paleogeneticist could yield a not clear DNA profile of either her murderer or an individual she had been in the company of very shortly before her death. Addressing these latest developments, Miami County Sheriff Dave Dachalk stated, We always have hopes to bring justice for homicide victims and their families. We never have nor will we, never, will we ever forget and we'll continually work the case and as new technologies are developed, we'll review our evidence to learn if it is worth resubmitting. King had been buried as a Jane Doe at Riverside Cemetery in Miami County, Ohio, weeks after her death, with several officers assigned to investigate her, investigate her murder, serving as pallbearers at her funeral. Following the identification of her body, King's family chose for her to remain buried within the cemetery with her Stepmother Cindy Sosaman explaining her family's belief that it had been God's plan that their daughter was to be murdered and to remain unidentified for so long. They believed King was blessed to have died within a community which had shown such consideration and dignity to her while she had remained unidentified. Her parents had long since divorced and her father John, we John Weasley Sosaman had remarried having several children with his second wife, all of whom had long wondered as to King's whereabouts and welfare. <sighs> On July the 20th, 2018, a memorial service for King was held at his chapel in Troy, Ohio. This service was officiated by the Reverend Gregory Simmons. Her new headstone was unveiled at the service. Marcia's father, John, had died on January the 5th, 2018. Her brother, Daniel King, and half-brother, Jonathan Sosaman, had also died by the time King's identity was discovered. Marcia's stepmother and eight other surviving family members replaced the headstone simply reading Jane Doe, with the headstone bearing her actual name at the service, which was attended by over 50 local residents. Describing King's personality, her stepmother described her as a very trusting young woman before informing all presents. Words don't describe the feeling we have for all of you, how you have loved her and taken her in your arms. Wow. Before, I, before telling you about my thoughts or theories, I don't have any theories though. Uh, I also have a stepmom and I cannot express to you how it feels to have a loving stepmother. Masha's stepmom reminds me of my own stepmom who loves me as her own child. And I know if I died one day, 
and remained unidentified for years and lost my biological parents, I know she would be my home. Well, every single person on this channel is important, but I have a more loving and protective part for my Joe family. When I first created this channel, I was thinking about dedicating this channel to those and making only videos about Jane or John Doe's. But then I realized that everyone deserves to be remembered, but still my Doe family is a little bit special for me and I will be a family member for to all of them. Well, and I'm taking a look at my notes if I'm missing something. Well, I'm happy that Marcia is identified and finally home, but I'm also sad that we don't know what really happened to her. Maybe one day we'll kind of like learn who killed her and we will punish them. But to be honest, I'm not gonna lie to you, I feel like the person who did this to Marsha is already that, like, he could be that, you know, and if you are an old subscriber of mine or if you are watching my videos, you would know that I can lay down. Come on, kids, come take out times. Come on, stand up, stand up, yeah. I want to scream. I want to scream like I'm, I'm this close, like this close to screaming. Okay, if you watch my other videos, you would already know that in my case, death is not a punishment. The word death doesn't mean punishment in my dictionary death is a salvation <sighs> and i wonder what went through her head when her murderer was strangulating her like did she have any regrets was she thinking about her family, her friends. Did she know the person those hands belonged to? Did she know that she was going to die in there? I don't know. And we will never know. Thank you for watching and I'm sorry about the bar again what um i had to have her in my room and i just didn't want to cut the video i just wanted to keep going and i hope you'll be understanding about the situation have a life full of stars till then